I want to thank uh, our media sponsor from Photonics Media, and together with SPIE, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the PRISM Awards for Photonics Innovation. So that's really one of the big reasons we do this, to get people together and, and celebrate and recognize innovation and recognize new product development. So let's get to the awards part of the evening. Our next category is Detectors and Sensors. Presenting this PRISM Award is a man who is really a 3D sensor pioneer. As VP of Engineering at Velodyne LiDAR, he is helping Velodyne make light detecting and ranging sensors ubiquitous for automotive applications, mobile mapping, robotics, factory automation. With a master's degree in electrical engineering from Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands and an MS in manufacturing systems engineering from Lehigh University, also listed as an inventor on 14 different patents. He's been pretty diverse. He's worked on recording head wafers used by all the major global hard disk drive companies, worked at a solid state lighting startup that grew into a $30 million business based on the development of LED modules, and he solved extremely difficult problems on the path to perfecting EUV lithography light sources as senior engineering director at Symer in San Diego, now ASML. Many years ago at Philips Research, he did early work on reconstructing 3D maps from images collecting with robotic cameras. And certainly, there's been a lot of technical ground covered between those days and Google cars driving around Mountain View today. He's the perfect person to present this year's PRISM Award for Detectors and Sensors. Please welcome Peter Kirstens. Thank you, Peter. That's very nice. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and privilege to be among these many giants here in the photonics industry tonight and present this prestigious award. So people told me that the 20th century was the century of electronics, but the 21st century will be the century of photonics. So having spent time in both industries, I thought I would look so for some evidence to prove that. So looking back at the 20th century, we witnessed the invention of the transistor and the integrated circuit and the postulation of Moore's law that states that the number of transistors and the processing power of an integrated cir circuit doubles every year. At that time, Moore's law was tightly coupled to Dennard's scaling law, which states that as transistors get smaller, their power density stays roughly constant. constant. And these two laws were really the you know, principle that facilitated the exponential growth in computing power per watt for many decades in that industry. So unfortunately for all of us, then our scaling law came crashing down in 2005. And the last decade or so, we haven't seen the historical increase in clock frequencies that we were used to, whilst transistors are still getting smaller and smaller. So this has resulted in a buzzword in the electronics industry that's called dark silicon, which describes that the growing, the growing gap between the number of transistors in a chip and the number of transistors that are actually on all the time. Many of them are off. So some models predict that the percentage of dark silicon will exceed 50% in the next few years. So I thought it's time to let our electronics colleagues who are working on dark silicon ideas peek around the corner and see all the bright light that's shining in the photonics world. Many haven't seen it yet. When I used to tell friends that I was working in the electronics industry, many knew what I was talking about. When I tell them I'm working on photonics, many say, for what? So, but, I think many of them haven't seen 
the dark silicon dacia. So since working at Velodyne LiDAR, where we're developing sensors that sense the environment near us for autonomous driving and 3D mapping, it's clear to me how photonics detectors and sensors are proliferating everywhere and will enhance our lives for many years to come. Now, of course, I would wish I could look in the 22nd century, not just to see the amazing gadgets that all of you would have developed, but also because I would have hoped by then we would have moved from 20th century electronics to 21st century photonics to 22nd century bionics or something like that. And I could finally purchase a bionic sensor that has always been at the top of my list, which is a female intuition sensor. <laughs> but I, I don't think I will ever see that in my lifetime. So until then, we're stuck in the photonic century, so let's honor our finalists in the photonics detector and sensor category. The portable Raman Improvised Explosive Detector by Alakai Defense Systems is a standoff detection system to detect dangerous trace molecules from explosives at safe distances. Hamamatsu's MEMS FPI Spectrum Sensor is a high-performance, cost-effective, and robust spectrum sensor within a compact package. The Wireless IR Analyzer from Spectral Engines is a compact sensor with MEMS-based, tunable filters for process spectroscopy using distributed devices. And the PRISM Award winner is Spectral Engines. Thanks very much for SPIE and all the judges. Um, very honored to be among all these uh, beautiful companies, beautiful people here. So uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank also our team. I uh, have my CTO, Ola Kanto, over here, and also our rest of the team uh, in Finland, which will probably be very happy when they wake up and get our <laughs> messages. I hope the 50 of them. Uh, it's not that easy to be a small company with amazing technology trying to change the world, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, you need to be the pioneer. You need to pave the market, which doesn't yet entirely exist. But what I've learned is that you need to have a good technology. You need to have the right people. You need to have wits. You need to have luck, but you also have to have the PRISM Award. Thank you very much. All the ideas, all the creativity, all the innovation that's here, it is really spectacular. Now, ideas are one thing, and they disappear after a while. What we see here tonight is the turning of ideas into reality, the turning ideas into product, which I'm sure Many of the winners, all of the contestants, realize is a long, sometimes lonely, and difficult path. We've heard many examples of that from presenters here. So I'd really like to congratulate on behalf of SPIE all the people who submitted to this, the whole 120. I hope to see their products make them rich. And I hope that the creativity continues in this industry we are expanding the frontiers of photonics. This is indeed the century of photonics. Thank you for coming. And on behalf of Photonics Media and SPIE, I hope your next products meet with great commercial success.